My dad and his brothers were operating a, a chain of junior department stores in small towns throughout the state of Kentucky. My dad happened to be here in Bardstown and opened the store just before the Depression hit. Well, during the Depression, this actually was a, a fairly viable business because people needed socks to sell for 10 cents a pair or a shirt for a dollar and a half or a suit for a funeral or whatever it might be for $15 or $20. And people needed those things, so the business actually thrived during the Depression, as strange as that may sound. So the, the, uh, as, as the uh, economy wore on and Prohibition was coming to an end, this, this area had always been a hotbed of the distilled spirits bourbon industry pre-Prohibition. So there were any number of people who wanted to get back into the business starting around the late 30s or the early 30s when it looked like Prohibition was going to end. So some individuals came to my dad and asked if, uh, if uh, they would be interested in joining a new venture. Well, I mean, think of this. This was the 1933-34. It was the height of the Depression. Conditions were terrible. You had no brand. You had no distillery. You had no inventory. And if you got involved in a crazy idea like this, what was going to happen? You were going to have to build a distillery, produce whiskey for an unknown brand that you couldn't sell for four years until it was really good, and in the middle of the worst economic conditions ever in the history of the country. I mean, it sounds like you'd have to be out of your mind to uh, be involved. And I've asked my dad, I've been asking him many times about it, he said, well, we just thought it was a, sort of a good idea. We really didn't know anything about it, but we said, why not? And that's about it. That's about all I could ever get out of him on that subject. So, so they gave these uh, individuals about ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000, I guess was a good bit of money in those days, and the distillery was built. And after about a year and a half or so, uh, the individual said, we came to my dad and said, we have a financial difficulties of our own not having anything to do with uh, the, uh, the, the business, but you either have to buy us out or liquidate it or we have to sell this to somebody. So for another, I think, $15,000, they bought out the partners and that's when the family took total control of this. And my dad, who was living here in Bardstown, was given the job of seeing whether this thing would work or not work. Well, he hired some very good people along the way Dad didn't at that point, didn't know a barrel from a box. You know, it was like, you know, what's this all about? I mean, they had gotten into this. It's almost like the private equity of the 1930s. I mean, it sounds yeah. a bit bizarre, but that's sort yeah. of what it was. They really didn't know too much about the business and gave some money, some seed capital to the business. Anyway, uh, few th everybody was so desperate for revenue that they brought out a brand at two years of age. And you can bottle whiskey at two years of age. I can't say that everybody was totally proud of all that. But it was like you know, any old port in a storm. Uh, you needed some revenue along the way. They had some whiskey that was two years old. That's bringing out a brand. They brought out a brand called Bourbon Falls. They gave them a little cash flow to sort of tie them over to when they actually had whiskey that was of really great quality that had the kind of aroma and taste profiles that you were looking for. And that was, uh, uh, they brought out a brand at that time called Old Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond. 100 proof. That was de rigueur. That's what everybody wanted. That was uh, the thing of the day. And it quickly became the number one selling bourbon whiskey here in the state of Kentucky. So that sort of really said something could actually be made of this business. And from the roots here in Kentucky, we spread to you know Indiana and Tennessee and other places. And that's uh, in general. Ultimately, you wound up with national distribution. I'm making it sound a bit more simple than it, <laughs> than it actually was, or probably was. I was, you know, wasn't even around at that point. But, uh, uh, but, but that's more or less the way the business sort of developed. Yeah.